Hello. This is Paul talking to you about high-powered rocket construction. Today I'm going to uh, show you a kit that's available from PML, Public Missiles Limited, and the name of it is the Lunar Express. And actually, I believe it's the Little Lunar Express. I've flown this type of a rocket uh, for a long time since it came out. Um, the interesting thing about this rocket is that the last time I flew it at Snow Ranch, I had a Cesaroni motor in it, and uh, the um, I had inertial separation on the nose cone. So what happened is after the boost, instead of it riding that boost to the apogee, the nose cone popped out. In mid-boost, pulling out the parachute and all the recovery uh, um, straps, and the, it instantly uh, got destroyed. And then when it came down in a mass, it fell on the river, the little brook that runs through the uh, area, and there was no water in it. There was just all the all the river rock. So then it got pummeled. And when I got there, two fins were off, and three of the little pods were off and broken. So uh, you know how it is. You take the rocket and you throw it in the back of your car and you say, so now I'll fix it. So what I've done is I've fixed it. Now one thing that's interesting and I'd never done before was that if the nose cone was all back in and it was bent over and holes are in it, and also the heavy amount of weight that you have in the nose, uh, that was rattling around. So I had to drill a hole uh, into the nose cone up here at the top, and I had to put in some uh, glue, some super glue, and then I had to seal it up with different layers of epoxy and epoxy putty, and then I had to take the Dremel tool and make it all nice. And I made sure I took the bottom and the top and I finished them in um, a bunch of Elmer's putty for the uh, fillets, which it looks good with them. And I also uh, put, uh, along with a lot of the uh, primer coat, I put a lot of the red coat on. So now it looks pretty good. Now if you look at it closely, you can see that the rock has been munched in many places. Now, I call it Tin Tin when I fly it because it does look and resemble it's like Tin Tin's rock in a destination moon. Anybody with a sharp eye will notice, though, that although it shares a 50 sensibility of design, um, the fins are curved in the uh, more curved, and there are only three of them. Um, of course, if you want a real good picture of the uh, Tin Tin rocket, go to Jack Haggerty's book, Spaceship Handbooks, and that has a wonderful Tin Tin one-to-one uh, blueprint. But this looks pretty good, I think. And around here, you know, it's always hard to make this checkerboard stuff work. If you try to paint it yourself, it never works right. But uh, this is just some, uh, some of that stuff they use on uh, uh, radio-controlled airplanes. This is like a mono coat, I think, with the sticky stuff. And you get it in patterns. And I think it looks really good. And when you see it on a flight line, uh, you can see it very good. And... Uh, I've gotten some very good flights out of it, and uh, maybe next time it won't destroy itself totally. So uh, that's it for tonight, and uh, I am going to try to fly this as soon as possible. It is finished very nicely, and I don't usually spend that much time finishing stuff, but it looks good. Thank you.